Hi guys and welcome to my second tutorial on Blender. Um, in the last one I went through where to get Blender um, and download it from, uh, a couple of bits and pieces to do with installing it and some information on some tutorials. So in this, the second tutorial, I want to go through uh, setting up a Blender just so that it's ready for your first use and you can get the most out of it. So here we have my version of Blender here on the screen and all I've done is start Blender up and we have the splash screen there so I'm just going to click off to one side to get rid of that. Um, I'm working on the basis that you have already installed Blender and that you have um, selected the defaults that came up when you installed it for the first time. So I'm just going to turn on shortcut view in case that ends up being helpful to anyone um, and then you'll at least see what I'm clicking on. Um, so the first thing I want to do is take you to the edit tab and then to preferences. Um, in this section here you can change your preferences funnily enough. Um, first thing I want to draw your attention to is this little, this little box in the bottom left hand corner and if you click on that um, you can load the factory preferences so if you've screwed things up completely you can go back to to what was factory set um, and then once you finish doing what you're doing you can also save preferences now an extra piece at the bottom is auto save preferences with a little tick box um, and I've actually got that selected so all that means is once I've done what I needed to do and I click on the cross to get rid of it it will automatically be saved without me having to do anything else. Um, so depending on how you like to work, you can either set it up so you have to physically click save every time, or you can do it so it does it automatically so you don't have to think about it. Now there are various different sections down through here which allows you to change things like your display, any editors, um, text rendering etc etc. There are different themes, um, different information on the viewport, lighting etc etc. Most of that you just need to go through <coughs> and if there's anything you want to change then please feel free to but for the most part you'll probably want to leave it as it is. This section here though marked add-ons um, this is where you have extra things in Blender, um, some of which are enabled by default and some of which you can add as an additional thing. Now if I untick enabled add-ons only, you can see that next to, to a lot of these the boxes are greyed out. Um, and if I scroll down through, um, you'll see the, the white ones with the tick boxes are the ones that are installed and then the greyed out ones aren't installed. Now depending on what you're getting into with Blender it might be that there's a particular thing that you want to have as an add-on and you can click on the arrow to uh, increase the description of what a particular add-on does. Um, quite often there's a, a button for documentation so it takes you to an internet page where you can read up more about it um, and you can report a bug etc etc and then to enable the add-on you just click on the tick box. Um, you can change it so that um, if there's anything that's non-official you can add in testing ones um, as well as the community and official ones. Um, in some instances the uh, add-ons are external um, so for example in the case of this shortcut viewer um, it's actually a web page that I got it from you download the zip file and then you go into the install section here and install it from an external source. Um, you can uh, choose which add-ons you want to view so for example if you're only doing video editing or whatever you can look at video tools um, so there for example there's a refining tracking solution I think there was another one to do with the sequencer which is probably the video sequencer um, and this gives you another one here um, and then you might be able to get some external that are paid for so that's kind of something useful to to be aware of because um, there are certain instances as you go down the line that you might find that you want to add on any particular um, add-ons. Um, there is also a search box so if you don't know what your add-ons are called but you've got a rough idea of what it's about you might be able to search in there and narrow down the options. So again we'll go down through here there's not a lot else that you need to worry about. The key map um, does allow you to change um, the key bindings and these are the, a lot of the preferences that were on the first box that you would have got rid of when you first installed Blender so if you didn't do it the way you wanted to you can change that. Um, going down to the system tab now this is a little bit more um, necessary to look at 
um, at, the, at the top we've got cycles render devices now what that relates to is in blender there are two different render engines okay well there's three but there are only two that are used normally one is EV which is a new render engine and the other one is cycles now if you are including any 3d objects um, from your world which is this world here that you create yourself if you render them in EV um, they tend to be generally less realistic certainly without a lot of work uh, and also if you're doing things like shadow catches and the like EV tends to struggle more with those things by default certainly at the moment that may change as it goes along so if you want to uh, when you're doing the video editing and compositing if you want to render a scene that has um, a realistic background in it the chances are you would select cycles now cycles is a lot more uh, processor intensive um, but it does give a lot more realistic um, shadows and lighting etc etc and it does also allow you to do things like shadow catches um, literally at the tick of a button a uh, tick of a tick box now with cycles it, if you see here it says device and it gives you the option of either a CPU or a GPU which is your graphics card now um, just bear that in mind a moment if I now go back to the preferences again and system you'll see here it says cycles render devices this is where this comes in if you happen to uh, get to a situation or you think there's a likelihood <coughs> you will get to a situation where you'll need to render using cycles for whatever reason you can uh, go under these tabs now the NVIDIA uh, video card that I use um, which is a GeForce GTX 1660 Ti supports something called CUDA um, now un you, none is the default but then if you go under CUDA you'll see that my both my uh, GeForce card and my processor are lif listed here uh, and I can tick both of those and it doesn't matter which I use then it will use CUDA which speeds up uh, rendering uh, quite a significant amount now other cards support the optics and the OpenCL but mine only support CUDA so if you look under these tabs if your processor or um, graphics card support CUDA for example tick the boxes and you'll just find that that will make life a lot quicker when you come to that section if for any reason they're supported and you can tick on them but you don't think you're going to use it it doesn't matter just tick on it anyway now you could look at your your undo steps and everything but that's entirely up to you depending on whether you think that um, further down the line you want to change any of that information but going further down here we've got the video sequencer and it gives you the memory cache limit now this um, this number here is basically the memory that I have allowed to allocate to the the cache for video sequencer um, so for example in my instance I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM and I've allocated just over 28 gigabytes which is sort of about three quarters of, of what's there um, so as a result um, it still leaves a little bit of the memory for use by the system and other processes and doesn't tie it up completely but it still gives a significant amount for that by default that's a much lower number I think it was like 256 or 512 or something um, which isn't really any any amount at all so the the more RAM you've got the higher that number should be if you have a low amount of RAM or you still want to increase further you can do use disk cache and you can select that and select a directory and a limit etc this is something I haven't gotten into but if you go on to um, do Google search for blender docs um, and look at memory cache limit on in there <coughs> you'll find the information on that so again yeah like I say just increase that it just means that when you're doing video processing that everything will be a lot quicker now with the save and load and the file pass again if you want to change any of that you can do but to be honest I haven't really bothered so that's the preferences uh, feel free to look through to your heart's content and like I say if you mess anything up completely you can just do load factory preferences and job done right so that's the basics of setting up the preferences for blender now another thing you might want to change are the uh, customizations within blender itself the the blender window now by default when you open it up you end up with the 3d um, layout you also end up with a lot of defaults down through this section here now 
if you if you want you can change your default render engine so for example you might just want to keep it on EV because it's nice and simple equally if you'll always use cycles keep it on cycles change it to your GPU or the CPU um, and then anything else you want to change down through here you can then go down through this tab here which is your output properties um, if you have a default resolution other than what's selected here you can change that and by the way if you click on this here it does give you a load of presets that you can actually put into the system um, so I've just gone with the standard full HD output uh, standard aspect ratio now the frame start and frame end by default it's 1 to 250 to be honest I just keep it like that anyway because unless you know you're working all the time with particularly large files there's no point in changing that as a default your frame rate um, is the output uh, frame rate now when you load something into the video sequence editor it should change that anyway but if you know that as a general rule you're always going to do 25 or 30 or whatever it is frame rate you can change that as well so that you don't have to change it all the time with the output tab if there's a particular folder or section that you always want to render your video out to you can select that and get that in here and then coming down through here you've got your file format now by default I do everything in FFmpeg video um, which is always done in color, color <coughs> excuse me always mpeg4 and then I have the the defaults down through on the video and then on the audio I go with the AAC so that's kind of the basics that I've done but whether you decide to do that that's entirely up to you um, metadata you can add in metadata to your save but to be honest unless you really think you need that I wouldn't change any of those and then post-processing is something you generally only need to worry about when you start getting into compositing and the like um, but by default you shouldn't need to change that so you can change some of those settings there the other settings down through here you shouldn't need to change by default um, but again if you want to you can do once you've changed that there as well you can then look at your main screen now if you are doing like I am um, a mixture of 3d and video editing you might just want to leave the screen as it is set up um, and then change things as you require it alternatively um, my setup when I'm doing video editing rather than going in the default video editor is to click on this little tab in the top left hand corner and then go down to video sequencer and then I have it set as sequencer slash preview which gives you a preview box at the top sequence at the bottom um, and then you can add things in from here um, so also with the playback for the sequencer um, I changed the sync to AV sync um, and I just like to have audio scrubbing on but that's not necessary specifically but the AV sync what that allows you to do is when you're playing the video if for any reason it's struggling to play the actual uh, visual side of the video it will drop frames in order to keep the audio in sync um, if you don't sync the audio uh, and video then when the playback occurs you will find that over time the two will not line up and obviously if you're trying to create a video that has audio that matches um, then that's not going to be very useful obviously if you're just doing a um, uh, an overdub of a, a background track or something that's probably not quite so necessary but it's something that I do so let's say this is your your default you've changed what you want to in here what you can do then is go up to file you can go down to defaults and then you click save startup file and basically what that does is everything that you have changed will now become the default startup so when you close blender again and reopen it by default it will load up exactly as you've left it so all your properties for your output the screen that you've set it on and any changes that you've made um, and this just means that you don't have to constantly change things um, but whether you decide to or not decide to is entirely up to you you know the, the changes you can make can be very small or they can be very large um, so yeah that's that's what you would do there um, if for any reason you don't or you, you know you've messed it up completely and you want to go back to how it was set up originally you can just do load factory settings now the only thing you need to be careful of with load factory settings is it factory sets everything 
So you will then have to go back into your preferences and you'll have to change things in there again. So I wouldn't suggest that you do it uh, willy nilly, but if you've not made any major changes there, you can reset it to the default uh, and therefore you, you won't struggle with it. But along the top here anyway, you do have, well, the layout tab is, is what will be your default if you've changed it. Um, but then you've still got your modeling, sculpting, etc., etc., at the top here. Um, and you do have extra things like I've got the video editing tab, which is essentially the same thing, but their default setup takes this bottom strip right the way across uh, and also has this section here. So let's say, for example, you wanted to customize this. What you could do is where the two join, if you get the arrow like that, if you right click, you can do join areas and then when you click on that it gives you an arrow either left or right so you highlight the area you want to if essentially get rid of and then if you click it it will then take you down to the same to you know to one screen um, you can also split areas as well so you could do a vertical or horizontal split um, and these things will you know there you go you've you've stuck a split in there and it's job done um, you can also go i believe into the corners uh is it there where is it to i think it's play go where you, where you get the plus symbol and then you can drag screens across like that as well so you can have as many screens on the scene as you like um, you can split horizontally and vertically and you know then you can drag things together if you want to to get rid of them um, or you can go into the middle right click join areas and start splitting things down um, but that's something you can play around with to your heart's consent content but it is all very very flexible and each window whenever you create it will always have this little icon in the corner which in this case you can see it looks like a clapperboard which is for your uh, preview same here but the if you click on that that if essentially get means you can change it to any editor type so you can have any combination of things on the screen you can have a viewport for example in here um, you could then have uh, the compositor in here you could then have something else in here I don't know let's say you can have the Python console if you're the sort of person who wants to do scripting so there are so many things you can customize with this program but I would suggest that you just stick with the, um, if I just do new general, don't save, there you go, so that's kind of taking me down to the bottom. So what I've just done there is I've played around with lots of changes but not saved anything, so I've just done file, new and general and then all that does is reload it um, with all the basic settings um, other side of what I've already previously saved in my startup file. So that's Blender. I've shown you how to edit the preferences and also how to do some customization. Um, if you're the sort of person that wants to follow along with a lot of YouTube uh, tutorials, then you may find that you want to leave some of the defaults as they are, unless you find someone who has a particular way of doing things, just because um, it can be confusing if your layout or setup isn't the same as someone else's. That said, the output properties you'll want to customize to your own regardless of who you are following on YouTube. So that's a little bit of a long-winded session this time. I hope it hasn't been too heavy um, and in the next session I'll take you a little bit further into Blender. <laughs>